Hi guys, Samantha from Do Some Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you a new technique that I've been working on for a little while uh, using Sculpey 3. So here is the technique. So if you have a look in the background here, ignore the little stars in the black background, if you see this kind of smudged watercolour effect in the background, that is what I have been working on. So I want to show you how to create that because I know a lot of you have Sculpey 3 uh, and it can be a bit brittle with a lot of different techniques and projects. So I've been working on some ways to use Skull P3 uh, in ways that will prevent it from affecting your project's strength. So for today you're going to be needing some stencils. So I've picked out three different stencils. I've got this really nice snake snakeskin stencil. And you can see I've been using that quite extensively. It's got some stains on it. Uh, I have got this cute, almost like bubbles stencil and a leopard print stencil. Any stencil will work for this, um, but these are the ones that I've got. You can get them on my Etsy shop, Jessima Design. So to start, we're going to be working with the leopard print. And I'm going to be using the leftovers from my evening firelight earring uh, tutorial, which is essentially a mix of a whole bunch of Cernet metallic clays um, that were scrap from the tutorial. So instead of turning them into scrap, we are now going to turn them into a marble. So I've just rolled out that sheet of mixed stuff and I'm just going to get it into one piece of clay. And that tutorial was a little while ago so this is a little bit on the hard side. If you don't have any scraps of uh, metallics uh, you can always just grab some metallics that you like, the colours that you like, and just assemble them. Just chop them all up finely and then roll them up into a tube like this. That will work as well. But I had some scraps, so I thought this is a great way to use up the scraps. So, just so long as they're metallic, though, because otherwise this is not going to work for this particular design. Okay, so I've got that all together. Now I'll take a blade and just I'm just chopping it. you can see they're starting to marble together so then take that scrap break it up a bit press that together and this is just going to marble it up a bit more then I'm going to cut that again just to expose some of those inward bits so that we get a more interesting marble Okay, then once you've, once you've got it kind of all marbled together, like so, what we'll do is we'll squish this back into a log. And by doing this, you're warming up the clay, so it will be nice and easy to use if you haven't already conditioned it. Okay, then I'm just going to start rolling, and this will stretch out those colours a bit. Okay, and then once I've got it rolled out quite a bit, I'll start to twist. And now I don't want a very uh, defined marble, I want it to be quite um, blended together. But you can use any sort of marble effect that you want, you can stop whenever you feel you like. So I'm going to twist this quite extensively, because the more you twist, the less defined those stripes are, and the more marble together it becomes. Then take that and just start pressing that together. And I'm not going for an accurate leopard print here because the leopard is um, a lot more of a um, almost kind of a tan colour with black spots. This one is kind of more of a copper colour, but that's fine. We're going for an artistic approach. If you want to go for something more realistic, please do. Okay, so you can see that we've got this down quite a bit, and that's where I want it press on one of those sides so that we can flatten it out into a, a nugget essentially and then I might just squish that down a little bit more okay, and I see I've got a little piece of glitter here I've been working with glitter lately so it's kind of getting into everything even though I've cleaned extensively but there we are you can see that we've got a nice very um, um, mixed together marble so it's not um, a very sharp marble which is exactly what I'm going for 
Okay, then I'm just going to press along these sides and get it into a more uh, rectangular shape. And this is actually a great way to create a kind of wood grain as well. I'll have to do a tutorial on that some other time. Because you can see on this and it creates a really interesting effect. But anyway, I'm going to put this through my pasta machine on my thickest setting. Just so that it's nice and even. Now I'm going to take it down to my middle setting, which is about one millimeter thick. And just before I do that, I just want to make sure that this is clean. And then I will run that through. And there we are. There is our marble. Very light, easygoing marble. Now you will take your stencil and keep in mind uh, the base of the clay that you are going to be pressing your stencil on top of needs to be a nice strong brand such as Primo, Cernet, uh, Souffle, Cato, uh, Fimo, uh, there are a few others, uh, Pardo, any of those will work. You don't want the Sculpey 3 to be your base. Sculpey 3 is what comes next. So then make sure that you roll your stencil in correctly. Like so, so that's nicely pressed in there. And then you'll bring over your chosen Sculpey 3 colour. And I'm going to be using black. Okay, and now also be aware with this technique that your base colour will show through a little bit uh, after the effect is finished. So just be aware of that. So I've got, I've got some Sculpey Black here and you can see it's very soft. We are looking for a soft clay. If you don't have Sculpey 3, what you can do is you can grab your chosen brand of clay and mix a lot of liquid clay into it and that will achieve the same uh, result. Okay, but Just take the Sculpey 3, press it across the surface like so. And we're going to drag it in a minute, um, but to start with I just want to be placing a whole bunch down. So just continue placing this soft clay down until you feel that you have enough. And you'll get a feel for the technique after a few times of doing it. So I'm just pressing it along like so. And so essentially what I've got here are just uh, snakes of Sculpey 3 and the best thing I can describe this as is almost the same way you would um, use a silk screen and drag the paint across. So you do want to be a little careful when you're doing it though and you will need to do it a few times over most likely just to get the best effect. So just take your fingernail and start dragging that clay and you want to be pressing really hard when you're doing this and now you might be wondering why don't I just use paint and yes you could use paint if you want um, but I find this gives a bit of a different effect this one I am only using one color the best of the effect comes in when you're using multiple colors it, it really comes across with a really almost like an oil painting sort of effect and I'll be demonstrating that in some of the next veneers that we are going to be doing. So you can see we're dragging it across and you go one direction and I would stop about there and then I need to do above over here so I'll just grab some more of that Sculpey 3 and you'll be using it quite a bit so it's a great way to use any Sculpey 3 that you bought in the beginning or if you were gifted some perhaps it's a great way to use it because you're using enough that you're kind of using up your clay but you're not using so much that it's going to affect the strength of your project okay so just continue working it through that stencil getting all of those uh, brown areas like so okay and then once you've got pretty much all of it 
um, you might find that the clay starts lifting up after a while. What you want to do then, if it's giving you a bit of trouble, is grab a piece of plain printing paper and burnish. And burnish as hard as you can and that's going to lay that clay down. And flatten it out as well because uh, you can use a roller as well. It's just going to even it out so that you don't have a bumpy surface. And now you can see there are some areas showing. If you don't want that, you can go back over and rub the clay in a little bit more. Um, I'm, I quite like that in the effect. I might go over and just gently rub over a little bit to try and move those in a little bit. But generally, I kind of like that in the effect. It prevents it from having a really sharp effect. So it's completely up to you how much time you spend on it. But there, I'm pretty happy with that. So then when you're happy with it, lift your stencil. And now one thing I want to say before we reveal the pattern is don't use delicate stencils for this. I'll bring over an example or two of some stencils that will probably break when using this effect. Uh, make sure you're using something that's fairly sturdy. And there is the effect that you are going to find. So you can see that looks really nice. And it really does give a different effect than paint, I find. I'm not quite sure uh, how much of that is being shown on the camera, but it looks really nice. So then I will take a roller and a piece of plain printing paper, and just roll over it, and then burnish it. And this will just lay it down flat, give me a nice flat image. And now that was only using one colour of clay. I want to show you how to do it with multiple colours of clay. So think of it almost like a satin slice, except that it's a flat satin slice and using a completely different effect. Yeah, technique, sorry. Okay. There we go. So that's completely flat. And I love how that came out. So let me just lift that up off the tile. And of course, be prepared that your edges are not going to be look that are excuse me. Be prepared to find that your edges don't look as good as the rest. I tend to make my sheet a little bit larger than I actually need it to be, just because the uh, edges don't tend to do very well because the stencil doesn't cover the whole piece of clay correctly when it comes to the edges. There we are, you can see how that looks and I really love that. I should probably burnish that a little bit more to flatten it out, but you can see what a beautiful effect that makes. And keep in mind that these Cernet Metallics will really look wonderful after you have um, baked this. So I might do that in a little while at the end of the tutorial, but just keep in mind that this is going to look really nice once it is baked. And here's the back, here's the front. So I'm just going to pop that to the side and we'll bring over our next piece. Okay, so before we start with the next one, I just want to show you some uh, stencils that are probably not going to work so well for this effect. Here's an example of one. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but there. Uh, this area over here would be fine. Um, even over here would be fine, as you can see. But it's this area that you want to be really careful of, where you've got these really spindly uh, pieces where if you drag against it, it has the potential to break. So just keep that in mind when using a stencil uh, because they are originally supposed to be used for the most part with paint or liquid substances. So when you're using the clay, just keep in mind how delicate your stencil is. Here's another example of this uh, by Birch Tree Stencil. You can see this part over here would most likely be fine, but these twigs are really, really delicate. So you just want to be careful with that. So let's bring over our next stencil. I'm going to be showing you how to do multicolored, um, a multicolored marble effect rather than a one tone color. And we're going to be using this beautiful bubble stencil for this. And some pearl white polymer clay. Now I don't need all of this pearl white, that is too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim that to size. So, there we go. 
and then I'm just gonna make sure that it's clean. I've got a little cat the hair there. Kit cat leaves hairs on absolutely everything. Okay. And then I'm just gonna put these across the surface. Like so okay, then again take your roller and roll over your stencil. Like so. Now we're going to be using some different colours. So for this one I think I'm probably going to be working with some blues and some greens. And you can use any colour you want. But these are the colours I'm working with. Now these are a little bit strong for my liking so I'm just going to grab a bit of that blue and I will do the same with the um, green. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some white and I'm going to mix about equal parts white to equal parts blue. I'm really just making a random colour here. But I'm just essentially wanting to lighten up this blue a fair bit. You can see that that mixes in quite quickly. Don't even need a pasta machine for that. And I will repeat with the blue and I might make a few lighter tones and a few uh, in the colours. So this one is quite a nice colour but I'll probably want a lighter one and maybe a slightly darker one. So make a few different blue green colours and also I'll be mixing a little bit of the green and the blue together. Okay and so here are the colours that I am going to use. So here is um, some green mixed with blue, mostly green, and this is blue mixed with green, mostly blue. And then I have lightened those up by adding white. This is just the green with white, that's the blue with just white, and then I have some plain white. Okay, so now we're ready to begin. So, whereas last time we did like rolls of colour across the surface, what I want you to do this time is I want you to take your colour of choice, and I want you almost to create like a polka dot effect across the surface. Just add little bits of that colour everywhere. Okay. Then we move on to the next one. Like so. And just continue with all of your different colours. There we go. Just move these off to the side. Now what I want to do is I want to go in the direction of the bubbles as far as dragging goes. So I'm probably going to be going this way when dragging. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. And now I am of course leaving some, obviously. Um, I will get back to those in a minute. I'm just going for the first swipe. Okay. Then I will just stick down some of that colour again in the areas where I have missed a fair amount. Because we had some extra colour that came off, so just stick those back down and then drag in the opposite direction going and making sure that I've got all of those spots for the most part. If I see any that I have really missed, like there, I might instead of just dragging it, I might just press against it. And then if you really have some areas that are missing, just grab some more clay and just so that it kind of matches, just mix the colours up a little bit and then drag. Okay, and I 
I think I've almost got everything. Just got a few there. Alright, now we're going to grab a piece of plain printing paper. And I'm just going to burnish this. Just stick this colour down. And now just go back and check, make sure that you've got everything okay, here. I need to just press, and I will use my paper to help me with that. You can even use your paper to gently push against the clay a little to move it into the right position. If you see an area that you need to um, apply clay to, you can do that. So let's see, there's one over there. Keep in mind, it does not have to be perfect, but we do want to get something very close to covered. Okay. Alright, and I think we are pretty much done. There's just one little spot here that I think needs to be done. And then always burnish it back down. We're just about done. Okay, move that out of the way and lift this up. And there are our bubbles, and it looks really nice. And you can see the edges, of course, don't turn out very well. And at the end of the tutorial, I'll show you how to clean this off, so don't worry about it. Um, I know that some of you have probably already typed into the comments uh, why I haven't shown how to clean it or how do you clean it. Don't worry, I will show that at the end. Then again, take this and burnish thoroughly. And so you can see what a different effect you get by um, marbling your clay. And now if any of you can think of a way to do it without marbling the clay, because I find that it's very hard to get a um, specific colour on, let me know in the comments below. And if you have photos that you would like to share, please join my group Jessima Tutorials Polymer Clay Community on Facebook. You can post any photos you want over there. I love seeing what you guys come up with, so be sure to check that group out. It is in the description below the video. There is a link there. Okay, and there is our bubbles, and it just looks so nice. I love the effect that it creates. Okay, and now again, I will always trim away these edges, simply because they never really turn out quite as well as the rest. see how beautiful that looks it just has a real oil painting look to it and I love the the contrast between the metallics and the uh, opaque clay uh, from the um, Sculpey 3 but keep in mind let me just bring this over again keep in mind that with this one I used black which is an opaque clay and just normal Sculpey 3 opaque clays and it turns out really well as well so don't be afraid to um, use any clay you want as a backing. Okay, so that's basically how you do that technique. Uh, I want to cover a few things before we finish up though. Okay, so let me just bring over the veneers that we've made and I'll talk about a few things. So here are the veneers. Okay, so thing number one, you can use any stencil you want for this project, but keep in mind what stencil you're using because delicate ones are going to cause issues and you might accidentally break your stencil. So just be careful what stencil you use. Um, make sure that when you are doing this uh, technique that the bottom clay that you're using, such as the pearl white or the marble that we have here, make sure that that is a strong brand of polymer clay and not Sculpey 3 because otherwise that kind of defeats the purpose of this uh, because Sculpey 3 is a brittle brand and is not recommended on its own in projects. Okay, thing number three. Uh, you can use any brand of clay to do this technique. You just will have to mix some liquid clay into the uh, clay before you apply it through the stencil because it needs to be super soft to do it. So that is thing number three. 
thing number four is how to clean off your stencils. So let me just bring those over. And now unfortunately this clay for the most part does get wasted. Um, what you can do is you can very carefully bring over a tissue blade and try to salvage as much of that clay as you can. Just be careful because you can slice through your stencils. So apply uh, pressure very gently. I don't want you scraping your stencil. I don't want you tugging at it. I want you to just lightly drag your blade across the surface. If there's any resistance, stop pulling against the blade um, because you've probably cut into your stencil. Like over here, you can see I've got some resistance. That's because the stencil is lifted up. Pull away and just remove the clay that you already have and then resume. Don't tug at it because you will end up uh, harming your stencil. And keep in mind you can use this technique with liquid clay, you're just not going to get the exact same effect. I uh, do want to do a separate video on that. So let me know in the comments below whether you are interested in seeing liquid clay and stencils in a tutorial. Okay, so there you go, you can see that we have salvaged a little bit of black clay. Uh, with the marble you will find that you have to um, drag away the clay that is in a marbled form, so you're not going to get a pure colour with that, but that is fine. Okay, then the way that you would clean it is you can get some isopropyl alcohol and put it on a wet wipe and drag across. That cleans it really easily. If you don't have any isopropyl alcohol, just using a plain wet wipe and gently scrubbing at it will work. Keep in mind again that your stencil can break. So if you're using a delicate stencil, just be aware that it can break, it can bend. So when you are dragging your uh, cloth across it, just be uh, mindful of what's lifting up and if anything is lifting up. That is why I tend to not use delicate stencils for this as well because the cleaning process can be a little bit tricky. But this one you can see cleans very easily. Okay, and then you might have to go from the back side and clean it some more. And now you will get a little bit of clay trapped in there. If you get that, put it under water and grab a toothbrush and just give it a quick scrub and you will find that it cleans up very quickly. So you can see, very easy clean up. Um, very little clay is wasted. Um, it's like very little. So that is how you clean your stencil. Now I do want to show you what these look like when they are finished. Um, I'm not going to show the entire process though, I'm just going to be making some donuts, really nice pretty little donuts. So I will do that quickly and I will show you what they look like once they are completely finished with some resin over the top. If you would like a tutorial on how to finish off your veneers, go back and have a look at all of the project tutorials that I have already done. There are absolutely tons of them with many different finishing um, effects on them. So do have a look at this. That. Now, one thing that you do need to keep in mind when finishing these veneers is if you are sanding it, be very careful because there is a super thin layer of clay over the actual base clay. So when you are sanding it, don't use too high, too low grits like 400 or 600 if you um, don't have to because you will end up sanding away your base your um, top layer of clay. So you want to treat it almost like a surface effect. So I would recommend things like resin uh, or liquid clay as a finish or even a matte varnish will work as well. Just um, sanding it to a high gloss is probably going to cause uh, more issues than anything else. So I would try to avoid sanding it as best you can. So just make sure before you put it in the oven that you grab a piece of plain printing paper and you give it a quick burnish. Cut out your bead, don't touch it with your fingers, put it in the oven and you will have avoided fingerprints. So just be, key, be um, mindful of that. So I'm going to make some donuts and I'll finish them off and you'll see how these look compared to the raw veneers when they are done. Okay, so I've just finished the beads up. So let me bring over our original veneers. So here is this one and here's this one. Okay, now here is what they will look like once baked. And you can see the difference there. Okay, so this one you can see that the colours go a little bit darker. Um, the Sculpey 3, the colours seem to uh, have a slightly brown tint once they're baked. Um, so you can see that. 
and you can see that the opaque versus the metallic backing is quite uh, stark. Same with this one, you can see that the Cernit has slightly yellowed rather than stayed that really copper colour, which is really nice because it makes it look closer to a leopard print. Uh, and also you can see that the um, metallic backing is really stark against the um, black Sculpey clay. So, that is just a really quick demonstration of what these would look like once they are finished baking. You can of course use these veneers in any uh, project you want. So go back through my projects and have a look. I have a website, jessimatutorials.com. Uh, I have separated all of the projects out on there. It will be very easy for you to see uh, all of the projects there. So check that out and you should be able to find a whole bunch of things that you can use these veneers for. This is just a really simple demonstration of how they would look once they are baked. So feel free to play around with it a bit more. But basically here is what it looks like. You can see it's really nice. It would make very nice market jewellery. It is a nice enough looking technique that you could use it on its own. You could make some really cute earrings with them. Uh, I just finished off the back quickly. But you can see there it's got a really nice finish to it. Same with this one. You can see it's really quite nice. Now remember you can use any backing you want. I've used a metallic backing for both of these but again an opaque backing works really well play around with maybe some translucent backings that could look really interesting as well and remember this is just one technique that you can use Sculpey 3 for so if you enjoyed uh, having another tip on how to use up your Sculpey 3 without it affecting the strength of your project let me know in the comments below because if it is popular I will work on another interesting technique for you I've got lots of ideas in mind so please let me know in the comments below and if you like these sorts of tutorials, please let me know in the comments below. And support the channel by joining my Patreon community on Jessima Tutorials. Uh, Patreon community on Patreon. I will provide a link to that in the description below. You get videos every single month. Uh, discounts for Etsy, colour recipes, all sorts of things. So check that out. Um, and that will support this channel so that I can continue releasing multiple videos a week. And also check out Jess Simmer Designs Etsy store. There are a bunch of different cutters, tools, and all sorts of things that you can use on there. That will help you with your polymer clay creations. And as always, I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.